Number 45. During a marathon race, a runner's blood flow increases to 10 times her resting rate. Her blood's viscosity has dropped uh, to 95% of its normal value, and the blood pressure difference across the circulatory system has increased by 50%. By what factor has the average radii of her blood vessels increased? All right. So there's a lot going on here. So let's just talk about the variables that are changing, right? It says blood flow increases, so Q is changing, okay? It tells us that the viscosity is changing, so that's eta. Uh, it tells us that the blood pressure is changing, okay? So that's P. And it also tells us that the radius will be changing, or the radii of all the blood vessels on average will be changing. Okay, so now what we need to do is figure out an equation or identify an equation that relates these variables. And I think this is pretty straightforward, that this will be the equation. Now, for this problem, we can simplify that the, uh, it tells us that the blood pressure difference. So really, this pressure could be represented as a delta P. And just like in this formula right here, this P1 minus P2 is essentially delta P. Okay? So now in order to solve this problem, what I'm going to do is I realize that a lot of factors are changing. And whenever I hear this is going up 10 times, this is being reduced by 95%, this is happening, this is happening, I'm thinking about creating a proportion, okay? Now, the question is, well, how do we create the proportion? So what I suggest is taking this equation, first finding that right equation that relates the variables, and then taking that equation and making it linear. What I mean by this is taking, making sure that neither side has a denominator to it. So take this value and bring it on out of the denominator. Okay, so if I were to do that, the equation would look like this. It would look like 8 times the viscosity times the length multiplied by Q is then going to be equal to the pressure difference. So I'll just write delta P times pi times R to the fourth. Okay, now I'm going to then, after I write my equation linearly like this, I'm going to basically take this equation and then divide it by itself. Okay, so what I do is I simply take this, copy it and put it on right beneath it, okay? So here is literally my proportion, okay? But these variables, although they're the same letters, they don't represent the same things necessarily, okay? The top equation here is gonna be called the, uh, it doesn't matter if we call it new or old, it really has no, it doesn't matter at all. Um, I'm gonna call this though the original values or the old values. And then I'm gonna call these all the new values. So essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write a little O as a subscript for each of these things, okay? Little o. And then a little n for new on the bottom. Okay, then what I'm gonna do is I'm now going to uh, look and see if there's anything that, well first, actually before I think that there's anything that's constant, in order for me to figure out what's constant, it might be best to figure out what's changing first. So now what I'm gonna do is I already listed them out over here, right? I already listed that Q, viscosity, pressure, and radius will be changing. So I'm not going to cancel them out. I can't because they're the same. So that's the same, right? The pressure, oh, excuse me, I said that that's the same. I meant that there's a change there, so we're not gonna to touch that. There's a change with this, so we're not gonna to touch that. There's a change with the viscosity, so I'm not gonna to touch that. And there's also a change with the radii, so I'm not gonna to touch that. Everything else will go bye-bye. So goodbye to the eights, goodbye to the L's, and goodbye to the pies. So now I, have an, now I have an equation, all right, that is a proportion. Now that states that the, visco that the old viscosity here, right, multiplied by the old flow rate, divided by the new viscosity times the new flow rate will be equal to the pressure change. I'm just going to drop the delta, all right, just easier. I don't feel like writing delta all the time. So this is just the original pressure essentially uh, multiplied by the original uh, radius to the fourth divided by the new pressure times the uh, new radius to the fourth. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at each of these independently. Uh, well, actually, first, really what I'm going to do is I'm going to look back to this equation now and try to create some equations based on the words. So, first sentence. The runner's blood flow increases to 10 times her resting rate. So that means her new blood flow will be 10 times that of her old blood flow, right? Her old blood flow, I'm assuming, is her resting blood flow, okay? So now what I did was I basically equated the new to the old somehow, all right, by that equation. Let me just make this a little neater in there. Q, O. 
that takes care of that. Let's move on to the next one. It says the blood's viscosity has dropped to 95% of its normal value. So that means that the new viscosity will be 95%, aka 0.95, of its original value. Okay, be careful with the words of and by. I've done that in another video. Okay. Um, the next is going to be the blood pressure difference across the circulatory system has increased by 50%, right? So here it says of, here it says by. There, there is a difference between them. You got to be careful. So now it says the new pressure here is going to be equal to the old pressure, okay, multiplied now by a 50% increase. So that means it's going to be 1 plus 0.5. Okay. In other words, and I can, I, I'll, I'm not going to use this one to state it because they both be the same, but I'm going to use uh, the viscosity here. So saying that something will decrease uh, by, uh, excuse me, decrease to 95% of the original is equivalent to saying it will decrease by 5% of the original. These are equivalent. You have to know that. Okay. All right, so, and then that should hopefully enable you to create some of these equations. And now, this is all we get from the problem. So now what I'm gonna do is, if you notice, plug in each of these into their respective variables in the denominator, okay? So let's do that. So this is now going to be, I'm gonna start on the bottom left. So it's N-O, really not N, it's eta. Um, it's, an, it's a lowercase h in Greek. So this is then uh, multiplied by Q sub O, now divided by the viscosity, the new viscosity. And this is what it is, right? It's gonna be 0 0.95 of that of the old, so that I plug that in. And then how about the new flow rate? Well, it's gonna be 10 times the original value, so that's now gonna be multiplied by 10 times that original. And that will now be equal to the the same thing on the right-hand side, PO, I'm going to leave it alone, times RO to the fourth, <coughs> then divided by now, P sub N, and I realize I have an equation here, right? So basically, this is going to be 1.5 times that of the original pressure, multiplied then by R sub N to the fourth. Now, why is this nice? Look, goodbye viscosity, goodbye flow rate, goodbye pressure differential. So now what do we have? We now have that the equation will now read 1 over 0 0.95 times 10 will be equal to now RO over RN. And I can raise both of these to the fourth. That's fine. But what I'm going to do is just law of exponents here. I can basically factor out that 4 and raise this ratio to the fourth power instead. So now here, here it is, right? Now, let's just solve this, okay? This, and you might say, well, wait a minute, I'm solving for two variables? Well, yeah, we're solving because it's saying factor of a changing by, so we're finding essentially the proportion, okay? Whether this is the right proportion or not, and what I mean by that, is whether this is organized correctly, meaning we should be comparing the original to the new, or we should be comparing the new to the original, I'm gonna take care of that at the end. I just wanna get rid of this fourth and get a number and try to simplify it a little more, okay? So now let's simplify uh, this particular side. All right, so let's, uh, let me see. I'll do it right beneath. So 0.95 times 10 is obviously, actually let, let's just simplify this all in one shot, right? We can do that. So there's gonna be one divided by uh, 9.5 essentially, right? So this becomes a decimal value of it's gonna be 0 0.105 or so. And that's gonna be equal to RO over RN all raised to the fourth. Now you gotta get rid of that fourth power, right? Because we're trying to find that variable. So raise this to the one fourth and whatever you do to the left, you better do to the right. So raise that to the one fourth. Now when that happens, the fourths cancel. And now we are left with, I'm gonna write the overall equation up here on the uh, middle right hand side. So there's now gonna be RO over RN and that will equal now 0 0.105 raised to the one fourth. So simply plug that on into the calculator. So this works out to be now 0 0.5 five, six, nine, or yeah, I guess five, seven, zero, considering rounding. And you can write that over one if you like. So what does this mean now? Well, this means that the original radius is about half that of the new radius. That's what that means, okay? 
In other words, we can clearly see that the new radius will be larger than that of the old. Okay, now that's really what they're asking me for, right? It says how much should it be increased, and we already found that, that it will be increased. But by how much? This ratio basically tells us the ratio of the old compared to the new, that the old is about half that of the new. But I really want to know the ratio of the new compared to the old. So this is simple, though, now, okay? Just flip this. I like to work at this, uh, work with this at the end because otherwise, if I got to flip everything, if I got to flip all of this, I think it becomes a little harder. But it's easier to flip this at the end and simplify. So now this becomes R n over R o will be equal to one over zero point five seven zero. Now throw this into the calculator, and we're going to get R n over R o will be equal to. So it's one divided by that result. Now it's going to be one point seven six or so. So this is one point seven six to one. Okay, now what does this tell us? Well, this tells us now that the radius of the new case will be about 1.76 times larger than that of the original. Okay, or almost two, right? That's what we were saying before, it was approximate. I was just rounding it, okay? So this is really the correct ratio now. So, and this is the factor. All right, if you had to then write this out as an, uh, as, a, as an equation, I would write something that looks like this. Rn would be equal to 1.76 times RO. Right, that's what this is telling us. All I'm doing here is just moving this RO up into the, up, up, nope, up into the numerator. Right, that's it. Just doing that. Bing, bam, boom. Okay, so just moving that on up. So this, though, is the factor right here. This is the factor. Okay, of, of how much is being increased by. If you wanted to give it in percent, it would be 176%. That's fine. They want it in terms of the factor, so usually they want the decimal value, but, you know, to each their own. All right, guys, so thanks for tuning in. Please remember to help us out and subscribe. We appreciate it very much. I hope you find these videos helpful. And if you do, actually, not only subscribe, but tell your friends. That would be even better. All right, guys, thank you so much. Take care.